Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about the .NET 6 feature that quite honestly people are not talking enough about in my opinion and that is source generated JSON serialization and deserialization. The reason why this is huge to me is because JSON is everywhere in our applications from APIs to configuration to messaging to eventing everywhere. So if we can save some time during this serialization and deserialization we can have huge, like, actual practical gains in our applications. Traditionally, JSON serialization or conversion has happened with either reflection or emitting IEL code. So being able to do that at compile time can really make a difference. That's what we're going to show you in this video. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe by hitting the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So let's go here and let's create the simplest thing. I'm going to create a person class, something like that. And then let's see how we would traditionally serialize this. So you'd have a person equals new person, and that would be first name Nick, of course, and then second name <laughs> you have copilot is suggesting Cage from Nick Cage. Sure, let's go with Nicolas Cage. So <laughs> you have Nicolas Cage, and if you want to serialize this, you're gonna have Nick Cage text equals JSON serializer dot serialize and then person and then let's print it. So console write line Nick Cage text and let's just run this and you see the serialized version. And if you want to customize this, for example, if you want to have camel case here, you can say this, but not the right intended um, property naming policy is camel case and then just pass it down here. I've been testing Copilot, by the way, for some time now, and it's so good. Okay, so we can run this, and now you can see this is camel case. And let's just move this into its own file. Here we go, and add a namespace. Fine. Now, let's say we want to do source-generated JSON serialization here. How would we do that? Well, it's very easy, surprisingly easy. All you need to do is create a new class called, in my case, person JSON context. Here you go. And this needs to be a partial class because the source generator will inspect that and write the rest of the class needed to do the operation. And this needs to extend the JSON serializer context. Now it complains that we need to implement a few members. We don't because once we add the attribute that we need, the source generator will do that for us. So what we need to say is JSON serializable and provide a type, type of person in my case, and then just save. And this now has created the class behind the scenes and in fact, as you can see here, this is the code generated by the source generator. This is all the serialization stuff needed. Now, because we had camel case serialization, we can even customize that. We can say JSON source generation options, and you can specify a generation mode. In our case, we're going to go with default. If you're only doing um, serialization, not deserialization, you might want to go with the uh, serialization version or metadata if you're doing both. We're going to go with default. Um, you can try this in your own time and see what works for you and what doesn't. But that's what we care about. And then we care about the property naming policy, which is camel case in our case. And now this is enough to actually have source generated serialization. The way it works is I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to go down here and I'm going to pass. We don't need the options anymore. What we need to say is person json context dot default dot person. That's it. And now this will hit the JSON serializer. If I run this, as you can see, we're still getting the same thing. But now we used the source generated version of this. Let's see if we can actually debug into that so I can show you what's happening. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Yep, here we go. You can see that this is going into the JSON serializer. I'm going to go into the context here and I am here. A lot of this is still in preview, so some things might take some time or might break, but you can see that this is where the code is actually running from. Now, this is simple enough and deserialization is the same. You know, you have the text and if you want to do a uh, deserialization, you say JSON serializer dot deserialize. You have the text and then you have the this thing and this will do the opposite. It will give you back the object. Let's just see that actually object object that's a keyword i can do that obj so whoop, here you go yep we have the person here so it all works now what i want to talk about is performance 
And I'm going to focus on serialization because this serialization in my test at least didn't actually yield any interesting results. It's effectively the same performance. I'm still going to have the benchmark included in this video and in the code, but the differences will be observable in the serialization, at least in my experience. So let's go ahead and add benchmark.net in here. Here we go. And then I'm going to just paste the benchmark classes because there's no point in me writing effectively this code 14 times. So I've added the two classes, the serialization, the deserialization. Here's what I'm doing with the serialization side of things. This is using camel case options for the old way of doing serialization. Then I have a randomizer with a seed. So the results we're getting are the same every time. And then I'm making a list of that person class and I'm generating a thousand of those. And then I'm serializing them using first a stream and then a string. So the stream is using a UTF-8 JSON writer and the string is just a stream call, but with actually encoding this to an actual string that is readable. There's different use cases. You might want to go with a stream and you don't even have to interface with the actual text at all. But if you want to see how the text itself would perform, I'll have that here. And I'm splitting this in two categories, the stream category and the string category. And let's see what's the difference for those. And then it's effectively the same for deserialization, but only from a uh, string to the actual list. I'm going to comment this out and to run this, I'm going to say benchmark runner dot run the serializer. No, the serialization benchmarks. Here we go. So I'm going to run that, change that to release mode and execute. And let's give it a minute or two until all those benchmarks finish running. And let's see what we get after that. So results are back. Let's see what we have here. Now the formatting is a bit weird, but as you can see, the classic serializer is our baseline basically, and that is 144 microseconds. And now generated one is almost 40% faster at 89. And we basically did, did nothing. And the classic one returning a string was 178. And now the generated is 122. It's more of a 30%. I've seen this fluctuate, but this is usually around the 40% mark and this is around the 35% mark. So this is nothing to sneeze at, especially if you think of how much realization you're doing in your application. Now, like I said before, the deserialization, I did not manage to have similar experiences with it. It's basically performing the same in my experience, but if you have a different experience or you know how I can get this code to perform better, please let me know down below. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.